Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and talk. <laughs> Welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe'i. Again, we have a great show for you. I think you'll find this interesting. One of the hot topics of this season is whether or not the state of Hawaii ought to have a constitutional convention. The last time we had one was in 1978. And since then, whenever the question was on the ballot, it would be rejected. So here we are in 2018 with another opportunity to decide whether or not we want a constitutional convention. So to help me with this issue, we have our special guest today, Chad Blair, who is the editor of the politics and opinion of the Civil Bee. That's right. Thank you, Governor. Which, by the way, is uh, w probably the leading political media, uh, I don't know what you call it, piece. In, Thank you. Uh, in the state of Hawaii. You know, certainly politics and opinion take up a lot of our online pages. It's a nonprofit. Anybody can go on there. Uh, they don't have to pay to read our content. I find that really nice. Yeah, <laughs> so do I. Uh, and uh, and it's uh, founded by Piero Midiar, the publisher okay. of okay. eBay, who right. lives here with his wife and children. See, that's really interesting. Someday we ought to have a conversation with somebody about all the people who find Hawaii a great place to live without yeah. any publicity, without anything. <laughs> they just come in and sort of live here and walk among us, so Definitely. to speak. Now we cover other things. We cover the legislature, the city council, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, uh, education, the environment, police accountability, but particularly during election season, we really ramp up and that is our entire focus. So now that the primary is over, we're looking ahead uh, to the you know, general election. And one of the issues, oh, as yeah. I just mentioned, will be the uh, Constitutional Convention. Now, why I find a civil beat unique on this subject is that most of the informed, uh, I guess, uh, what, what do you call it, I opinion makers in the state of Hawaii has sort of uh, stayed a little back from answering that question. But, um, you know, you, you're, uh, just, you, you just went right ahead, we Civil Beat, and, and decided that as far as you're concerned, editorially, you are uh, es uh, espousing that we have a constitutional convention. We are, and it's for a couple of reasons. One reason is that we've actually polled it. We have surveyed voters, and back in December, two-thirds of the people that we spoke to, registered voters in the state of Hawaii who plan to vote, said they'd like to have a con-con. The same thing in May. The numbers went down a little bit, but still a pretty healthy majority. So that's one reason. Another reason is, as a number of our people that are sit on our ed board are from the mainland or have worked on the mainland in states like California right. and Oregon and Washington State, a fairly progressive states, fairly uh, advanced liberally, if you will, politically. And yes. there was a sense of frustration watching our own legislature not move on some issues that we thought they should move oh, on. Oh, fantastic. And I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, medical marijuana, should it be radical, or rather recreational marijuana? We already have medical marijuana, right. but it took us forever to get at those dispensaries set up. Yeah, you would think with, with what many people would consider a young legislator, <laughs> that but would have been you'll a see kind it, of a no-brainer. Probably even from your time, there was probably a recreational or decriminalization bill, but it never gets heard, or if it does, it goes nowhere. So that's one thing we thought, well, if the legislature's not going to deal with this, why not have a con-con consider that? Now, some may say that's not as serious an issue. Another issue is maybe we ought to have a referendum initiative and recall. Okay, we, back in 1978, that, that came those, up, right? Those were the, 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 well, they were the main issues in terms of public um, involvement. And the, the either pro or con. Right. And it was, I think, one, a form of, uh, I was a member of sure. that convention. And one form of it that almost passed, lost by, I think it was a tie. Wow. It was, an, it was a tie. It the didn't actual even, vote. It didn't even go tie. to the voters, and it didn't make it out no, of the it delegates. Never made it out of the, never made it out of the convention. Uh, it was a kind of a cutting issue between the two factions, really. Although that's not a good way to do it. Uh, but so, okay. So, well, here's our thought. 
The, that issue has also come up at the legislature nearly every session. It, it never gets heard, initiative, referendum, and recall. Uh, you think to California as probably being the most prominent state. Of course, that's where uh, Gray Davis was recalled and Arnold Schwarzenegger got in for that special session. But there's also uh, referendums, there is initiative. And so you'll see a ballot process in California in which all sorts of questions go be for the voters. Well, you know, one of the things about the California Constitution, it's about that thick. I mean, this is a little <laughs> exaggeration, but no, I've heard the result, same thing. Yeah. As a result of initiative referendum. But our feeling is if the legislature, who are the appointed delegates, the elected delegates, the people that represent us throughout the state of Hawaii, if they're not going to move on legislation that we think is important, why don't we have a con con? Vote for delegates to go in and do that well, as well. I, I, I can't help but recalling when, when you tell me this, uh, John Kennedy's book, um, uh, so I forgot what it was, but it was Profiles in Courage. Profiles in Courage, where it was the, the legislative duty sometimes <laughs> to disagree with the, uh, with the populace. Now, I, how does that fit in? I understand this, I that. And, and having said this, here's another issue that we have seen. A go before the legislature, it seems to be every session or every other session, medical aid in dying. Well, lo and behold, the legislature actually passed that right. this past session. And that was a kind of a, you know, that was a, a little bit of progressive. No question. In fact, I even wrote a column for Civil Beat giving credit to the leadership of the House and Senate, the chambers uh, as a whole, for voting finally to put that into law. Now it's going to be the law. It is the law. Yeah, it is. I think it goes into effect in 2019. But that took forever. There's been some other progressive things that came out of this past session. But generally, even though Hawaii is a blue state, often our legislature has been fairly conservative, at least in rest recent decades. You know, it's, it's re that's re a really interesting observation. And in fact, I think, I think you wrote an article about Quite that. Quite possibly. <laughs> uh, you know, and, uh, which I found very, very uh, thought-provoking, actually. So I, I mean, look back to the 1970s. You had the Prepaid Health Care Act. That's well, we, we pride ourselves, and the Democrats used to pride themselves, especially in the 70s and 80s, right. of being the first in the nation. Equal first Rights nation. Amendment, even though we don't have it at the federal level. Abortion rights for women. I don't know if that was before Roe v. Wade, but... It was. It, so that's yes. really, in so many ways, Hawaii was fairly progressive, certainly in its environmental laws. A lot of that oh, came out of the, the labor Congress. law. Oh, absolutely. Uh, all of that. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like the more democratic we became, the more conservative we became. It yeah. is. And so we feel that, look, what happened to that? What happened to that idealism? What happened to wrestling with these issues, even though they are challenging, even though they may turn off some voters and people fear uh, that they may not be reelected? We feel that that is what a democracy is all about. And maybe it's no coincidence that our voter turnout is as low as it is. One argument uh, maybe for a con, con is the fact that the, the other alternative process for amending the Constitution is to actually have the legislature propose an amendment. Right, and we actually do have a and constitutional... It's a kind of a, a way of... It is, and there is a, a ballot measure, an amend, a constitutional amendment question on the ballot in November, uh, leveling uh, a, a surcharge, if you will, an extra tax on investment properties, properties that cost more than a million dollars, and that would go to schools. And this was the initiative of the State Teachers Association. You know, another reason why we're going out on front on the CONCON, -con, because we started this before the primary happened, is frankly, there aren't a lot of races that are going to be very competitive in the fall. And the CONCON -con question and the constitutional amendment question on taxes for schools, a few OHA races, a few other races here and there. Might be the only interesting thing. Pretty much, on the as you well know, by and large, uh, the primary is our big race. Well, I, I found it very interesting that when the legis that most of the cutback uh, amendments to our state constitution, in, in other words, the more conservative amendments, like the marriage, um, there was a, 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 an amendment actually that uh, the, made it possible for the legislature to define what constitute marriage That's before they eventually went out and passed And something. the irony that our court, our high Supreme Court, was the first in the nation back in 1993. Right. We said, look, unless you can find a reason um, 
I mean, basically, it's discrimination against gay couples. They were denied the right. And by the way, I appointed that justice, just so that uh, folks Levinson, out there can know. Steve Levinson, Steve I believe, Levinson, was the author right. of that. And unless the legislature could come up with a compelling reason, in other words, to pass, um, to amend the Constitution, to give them the right to limit marriage between one man and one woman, then, then you could not, you well, could not I, deny I, marriage I, to gay couples. I, I find it interesting that uh, that seems to exist, that the, that the cutbacks, that the conservative But it, it took forever. I mean, remember we had reciprocal beneficiaries, and then we had civil unions. And finally, give Neil Abercrombie some credit, he ordered the legislature into session 2013, and lo and behold, after hours of agonizing testimony, they did enact well, same, same thing marriage. with medical marijuana. That's exact. But why did it take so long? Again, Hawaii well, was at the head of the I curve. I think that's an argument for a constitutional convention. The idea that uh, it seems that the people, when right. they get together, have a more progressive vision. That is our argument. Uh, of the future than, than, the, uh, than the establishment or the legislative establishment. Uh, and, and I think there's some data, actually, to, to, to uh, support that point of view. You know, so in, the, in that sense, uh, you might be on the right side of history. But um, uh, what, what I don't, uh, what I, I find less uh, compelling is, is the issues themselves that seem to be coming up. They're all old stuff. Now, maybe that's not bad, but the, you know, we've, 40 years we've been debating uh, initiative and referendum. And, and it never passes, never, not even in the, the prior conventions. But is there anything new? Is there anything, something out there that is so compelling that we ought to have? Because the League of Women Voters, I believe that's their argument against the Constitutional Convention. There is a concern, um, and this is an answer to you. The second question is that maybe um, it could get, uh, unintended consequences could come from a con-con. Because we were talking about California earlier and all the ballot questions they have, the, the, uh, the proposals that, are, that go before voters, it could backfire. I mean, remember back in 1978 was the, the proposition where they cut back on the taxes, they've had troubles funding the schools, uh, they've gone back and forth and it could be a step forward and a step backward and that's the concern that can happen here. I know collective bargaining rights, which came from the 1968 con con, I'm sure the public sector unions will be very concerned that a con con this time around might touch that very important part of our law. You know, it's interesting though, but again, both whenever we bring up, whenever we make these arguments, there are really two sides to it. I mean, the idea of having a citizen's convention uh, is, uh, you know, it's attractive in itself. I mean, democracy is messy. I mean, <laughs> you know, Look at who we ended up with as president. I mean, you know, who would have <laughs> you thought? promised me we were going to go well, down I'm that way. I'm not going to go down that way. <laughs> but I, answer I, I, to I, your, and, uh, and, uh, what new could come out of this convention? I think one possibility that we've discussed and we've actually editorialized on, why is the legislature exempt from the state's sunshine law that doesn't apply to other agencies of government? And that's something that the legislature itself pass that law. In other words, they themselves are keeping the public in the dark on many of the things that they are allowed to do behind closed doors. That's right. something that a con-con could come together and say, no, the Sunshine Law should apply to the state legislature. Or the opposite. Or in, the, it, well, in, you know, the opposite in this sense, that it applies, it doesn't apply to the legislature, but it applies to every other deliberative body, city council. We, we would argue that you ought to council. have that cover the legislature. Right. And, and we so, think that's wrong. It, you know, it seems to me like there's a kind of a hypocrisy. Uh, that's, that's the way we feel. Here's, here's situation. another one. Term limits. Now, while I personally uh, don't support term limits, I believe that that's the voter's job. If they want someone out, they should vote them out. But we do have term limits for all the county mayors, the county prosecutors, the county council. The that governors. The governors, the lieutenant governor. In fact, it was the 78 Con Con that had the term limits for governor and LG. Well, what if lawmakers were suddenly faced, and I mean specifically the state house and senate, 
where they, if they were faced with term limits? Might that change the way they do their jobs? If they do that, oh, I'm not going to get will it, it for... Be, will it make it better or will it well, make it worse? we would argue that maybe it would make it better because you would not get in there and be ensconced, uh, be so influenced by all those... Uh, campaign donations that are coming from special interests that maybe you would actually go in and say, look, I've got eight years. You know, actually, let's do the people's actually, work. Um, I think that if, if you really research the issue, one of the reasons why some of those things don't pass in Hawaii, it has been the California example, hmm. where they do have term limits, for example, and it actually seems to have worked the other way. Hmm where people start looking for a job <laughs> immediately, very quickly after they get elected, and they end up becoming much more susceptible to special interests. These are the kinds of arguments. What I find it was always attracted me about having a constitutional convention is the ability to argue it. And, to up, and if, we, if we like what we now have, the ability to uh, re-justify it. You know, I, I think the process may be even more important than the uh, individual issues. Well, one of the things about a process, and of course I, I was just in high school at the time, but the new leadership that came out of the 78 ConCon is not only yourself, but a Carol Fukunaga, a Jim Sean, a Leslie Hara, a number of people, oh, Walter Ritty, People that would become leaders, well, Anti Frenchy de Soto, Frenchy de Soto uh, who would later chair OHA, right? right. And um, you had a, a sort of a breeding ground for new, fresh leadership coming in with some idealism. And we think that could be, I mean, you talk about argument. What a wonderful opportunity to get them all in the same room and have them talking about ideas to change this government. Or so, to justify it. Or to justify it. We're going to come right back, folks, for a more on whether or not we should have a constitutional convention. And if we have time, slip a few other issues in. Uh, since we have been able to grab the political editor of the Civil Bee. <laughs> so we'll be right back. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahee and our special guest, the editor of Politics and Public Opinion at Several Beat, Chad Blair. And by the way, folks, call on in if you, uh, if you want to. In fact, we would encourage you to. The number is 808-374-2014. 808-374-2014. And I would tell you how to tweet, but that's something that's beyond. <laughs> I, and I'm not going to go where I said I wasn't going to. That's gonna. all right. Uh, yeah, the process of the ConCon. Uh, I, you know, I, I just find you know, that has always been compelling to me because there is a way for direct citizen participation. But uh, maybe you should let the folks at home uh, you know, know, know how a uh, amendment actually passes. This is not something that where people get together. They raise their hand and it's done. No, uh, we should explain, first of all, that most people probably living in Hawaii uh, today might not have been eligible voters back in 1978, right? 1978, right. no matter what comes out of the ConCon, -Con, every single amendment has to go before the voters. In the case of 78, every single one of them was improved, including the establishment right. of the Right, it was of approved by, by the voters. They were, I think, a, a, a number, over 100. In fact, we were such an activist uh, constitutional convention 
that one of the arguments <laughs> against ever having one again, well, you know, it's really funny for, for, for two me. Two activists? Yeah. For the first two, well, the first thing that happened, right after we, uh, we, we, we made the amendments, we took it to the voters, they approved it, was the legislature passed the constitutional amendment changing the ratification process, mm. upping the uh, number of votes that it would you would need in order to pass the constitution. And, and to us, Convention. this is perplexing. And what this means to voters that are going to be looking on November 6th on the Con Con question is, if you leave that question blank, if you don't put in your X or your check mark, it's a no. It's a no vote, which really? is just silly to us. But it it, it stood yeah, because it, the legislature <laughs> made it. Yeah, I think the, I think the rule said basically that you needed. 50, you need to have one more than 50%. 50 plus one, yeah. Uh, in terms of the actual vote, but that total vote for a positive vote has to be more than 50%. So that's why cast. an education campaign really needs to be stressed for the CONCON -Con in particular. Common Cause Hawaii, which is not taking a position per se on whether to have a CONCON, -Con, has said this is their biggest concern, or at least one of them, that people understand not only what that vote might mean, but how a con con would work, because it actually would amount to three elections. You would have to have, well, certainly you'd have to have the first vote to pass, the, to agree to have a con con. You'd have to have a second one in order to elect the delegates, like you back in right, 78. Right. And then you'd have to have a third vote in order to ratify or to, to vote against anything that came out of that con con. That's a lot of that's a lot of votes. And, and, and it's quite a standard. It it's is. almost, it's very difficult. It's In a fact, high I, bar. I tell my friends that uh, for those of you that don't like a con con, don't, you know, unhappy with it, I don't know whether anybody could actually meet that standard, uh, you know, in a major way, anyway. It, 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 every, um, every election we have constitutional amendments on the ballot, it right. seems like, and very few of them pass right now. And those that pass tend to be uh, e emotional at the moment. You know, like the, the anti-gay marriage right. amendment that passed back in 1998. Right. Exactly. So, so that's one of our concerns. I think another concern is we didn't have super PACs back in 1978. Right. Uh, we didn't have uh, Citizens United approved by the U.S. Supreme Court a couple of years ago. We didn't have the ability to use dark money uh, coming from... Sometimes, who knows where? Who knows where to influence decisions uh, like we did back then, and we're very concerned that that could really. I mean, can you imagine all the television commercials, all the the, the mailers at the mailbox, all the use of social media to get out the word, and that is a concern, um, particularly on certain interests that don't want certain constitutional amendments enacted. You know, it's sort of interesting, but the opposition. One of the major groups you know, opposed to initiative referendum um, <clears throat> was the, uh, the, I guess you would call them the, the welfare groups, the, the, the poor, the uh, social... Social justice groups. Social justice groups and the rest. And the reason was, was, was that, that they, they were afraid that poor people wouldn't have the resources to pass uh, amendments that, uh, or law, actually, in, in the case of referendum and, and initiative, um, <clears throat> wouldn't have the ability to take advantage of that, but people with money would. And the particular issues had to do with zoning. Mm. You know, where, where um, and, and, and I think history shows that initially, like uh, Queens Beach, for example, on this island, initially people get together, they downzone the place, and all of a sudden, the landowners get together, and it's up zone, hmm. you know. And that happened on Kauai as well. But the fear of, uh, of, I think, of outside money is is really real. Another thing that would be of concern, and you of all people know this, um, you have said as much at a forum regarding a possible con con this year. What might happen to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs? Is it right. possible? That, um, that that might be impacted in a negative way that would actually hurt the way OHA operates and the way it serves its beneficiaries. 
On the other side, some might say that you could use it to maybe secure that those ceded land revenues really did stay at the, the amount that uh, a judge recently said they should be Well, at. There, are, there are things that we could change about the Constitution, yeah. no doubt. So there and is, a, would be yeah, there's a fear of tinkering here and there that might go overboard, but um, if the legislature isn't going to do it, then this is the forum where it can happen. It's the only forum. Is the legislature even capable of handling those types of issues? I don't think so. When when the when the judge said that it looks like uh, you know OHA should get or De Department of Hawaiian Homelands is is another example. Twenty eight million right. dollars. Right. Um, I mean, this uh, the, the courts have their jurisdiction. The legislature has its jurisdiction, and I'm not going to wade into that. But if there's a dispute on who who controls things, and uh, you disagree with whatever comes out, a con-con might be the area. Yeah, because otherwise what you that. would have is two um, institutions really just playing this off against themselves. Right, and DHHL has its own uh, challenges because it, it, it goes back to the 1920s and the U.S. Congress being involved and then statehood. But OHA, of course, was created well, in 78. what I find interesting about all of this is that... Um, is the way public opinion have, has drifted over the issue of con cons, over, actually in my case for the past 40 years. Yeah. And you know, right after the Constitutional Convention of 1978, as I said, the legislature changed the standard, right. saying we're never going to have another <laughs> runaway convention. And we haven't. <laughs> and we haven't. And, and what, what's interesting about that, though, is that for the first 20 years or so, I, people like myself are saying, we should have one, we should have one. This, this, is, this document was never meant to be perfect. And, uh, and for the most part, the general public voting it, uh, voting it down, voting it wow. down. And, uh, and yet, in this day and age, it seems like the public Seems pretty much after 40 years, maybe it's worth a try. Maybe, as you say, a lot of people weren't even around. Right. And the pe <laughs> and it is so interesting to see the establishment that, in a sense, sort of made sure that there was no other con con ever, or took the position that there shouldn't be. Now are uh, saying we need to protect this constitution. Right. We need to protect it. We need to do everything for it. But as you know, a constitution, at least this is my argument, I'm not a, a strict uh, interpreter of the constitution. I see it as a living document. I know that's different when Antonin Scalia believes and some of the more conservative justices, but I believe it, it is an amendable document. The, the Bill of Rights, including the First Amendment, was something that came later. It's the First Amendment to the constitution. Right. And we have amended, what, up to 27... I forget what the figure is, 26, 27 times at the federal level. It was a mistake now and then. Prohibition, for example, was right, the wrong way to right, go. Right. Uh, but uh, the women's right to vote, uh, giving people uh, 18 well, 14, years of age. 14, 15, 16 oh, amendments. The, the most important that, amendments, the 13th yeah. coming out 13th, of the Civil War. Right. Exactly. So uh, that just shows you an example at the federal level. Uh, here at the state level, I think that, that shows you the possibility of what can be done. Uh, the danger, if you have a prohibition, but the opportunity to to make it a more just and equitable society. I think uh, you know, as, as a and I and I have to confess, my own personal bias on all of this is I I don't know yeah. what we should do, and which is unusual for me because I've been an advocate of having. And people one. are trying to get you to actually to get off the fence. And yeah, say which they are. are they are. But you know. Um, it is a wonderful opportunity for the citizens to appreciate their own government. I don't know if I would have had any hesitation at all were it not for the fact that, you know, I, I see what's happening on the national level sure. and I tell, I tell myself maybe this is not a good time. Hmm. Uh, that, in other words, that people seem to be not afraid to be almost un-American mm. <laughs> in their biases uh, and espousing it and, and, uh, on one hand. And on the other hand, everybody's apathetic and nobody shows up to vote. Yeah, particularly in this state. Right. <laughs> well, across the country, actually, yeah. except uh, one good thing about your favorite, uh, no, would, uh, your favorite person who we will not talk about <laughs> this uh, Donald Trump is that he seems to be getting people involved, at least some types of people. We'll see. I think the midterms will almost certainly be uh, its own referendum on the Trump administration's first two years in office. 
We'll see if the House stays in control by the Republicans. It looks like the Democrats might take it back. And uh, the Senate, it's a closer battle. But I think that is the big concern. The thing about the Trump administration, the person, the big elephant in the room that I don't want to talk about but will anyway is it is remarkable how the dynamic changes sometimes literally by the hour or by the second, by the tweet, if you will. <laughs> or oh, by the flag. You could be talking about something in the morning and by noon it's something else and then by six o'clock it's something else. And uh, today alone, on the day that we are here, the, the flag goes down for John you know, McCain. Back. And the flag goes back up and then the flag goes back down. <laughs> and and uh, it's the, the speed of which these things are happening or are astounding, but Hong you know, Kong might be a chance. 20 years ago, oh. we, if you had a child, like, we'd seriously be considering giving them some kind of <laughs> medication, medication. To slow them down. Slow yeah. them down. But, you know, okay, <laughs> here's the last thing, okay. consideration for people regarding the Constitutional Convention. Folks, if there was no convention in 1978, there would have been no Governor Wahe. <laughs> so, you know, take that for what it's worth, and thank you for joining us. I hope that all of you take very seriously the issue of whether or not Hawaii needs to have another constitutional convention.